What is a point by serial correlation? Point by serial correlation is a special case of Pearson correlation and examines the relationship between a dichotomous variable and a metric variable. What is a dichotomous variable and what is a metric variable? A dichotomous variable is a variable with two values, for example gender with male and female or smoking status with smoker and non-smoker. A metric variable is for example the weight of a person, the salary of a person or the electricity consumption. So if we have a dichotomous variable and a metric variable and we want to know if there is a relationship, we can use a point by serial correlation. Of course we need to check the assumptions beforehand, but more about that later. How is the point by serial correlation calculated? As stated at the beginning, the point by serial correlation is a special case of the Pearson correlation. But how can we calculate the Pearson correlation when a variable is nominal? Let's look at this with an example. Let's say we are interested in investigating the relationship between the number of hours studied for a test and a test result with passed and failed. We have calculated data from a sample of 20 students where 12 students passed the test and 8 students failed. We've recorded the number of hours each student studied for the test. To calculate the point by serial correlation, we first need to convert the test result into numbers. We can assign a score of 1 to students who passed the test and a score of 0 to students who failed the test. Now we can either calculate the Pearson correlation of time and test result or we use the equation for the point by serial correlation. X bar 1 is the mean value of the people who have passed the test and X bar 2 is the mean value of the people who failed. And 1 is the number of people who passed and 2 the number of people who failed and N is the total number. But whether we calculate the Pearson correlation or we use the equation for the point by serial correlation, we get the same result both times. Let's take a quick look at this in data tab. Here we have the learning hours, the test result with passed and failed and there the test result with 0 and 1. We define the test result with 0 and 1 as metric, as is usual for dichotomous variables. If we now go to the correlation and calculate the Pearson correlation for these two variables, we get a correlation coefficient of 0.31. If we calculate the point by serial correlation for learning hours and test result with passed and failed, we also get a correlation of 0.31. Just like the Pearson correlation coefficient r, the point by serial correlation coefficient r pb also varies between minus 1 and 1. With the help of the coefficient, we can now determine two things. One, how strong the correlation is and two, in which direction the correlation goes. The strength of the correlation can be read in a table. If we have a coefficient between minus one and less than zero, there is a negative correlation, thus a negative relationship between the variables. If we have a coefficient between greater than zero and one, there is a positive correlation, that is, a positive relationship between the two variables. If the result is zero, we have no correlation. Often, however, starting from a sample, we want to test a hypothesis about the population. We calculated the correlation coefficient from the sample data. Now we can test if the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero. Thus, the null hypothesis is the correlation coefficient r is equal to zero. There is no correlation. And the alternative hypothesis is the correlation coefficient r is unequal to zero. There is a relationship. Before we get to the assumptions, here is an interesting note. When we compute a point by serial correlation, we get the same p-value as when we compute a t-test for independent samples for the same data. So, whether we test a correlation hypothesis with the point by serial correlation or a different hypothesis with the t-test, we get the same p-value.
If we compute a t-test in data tab with these data and have the null hypothesis, there is no difference between the groups failed and passed in terms of the variable learning hours, we get a p-value of 0 0.179. And also, if we calculate a point by serial correlation and have the null hypothesis, there is no correlation between learning hours and test result, we get a p-value of 0 0.179. In our example, the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, which is most often used as significance level, and thus the null hypothesis is not rejected. But what about the assumptions for a point by serial correlation? Here we must distinguish whether we just want to calculate the correlation coefficient or whether we want to test a hypothesis. To calculate the correlation coefficient, only one metric variable and one dichotomous variable must be present. However, if we want to test whether the correlation coefficient is significantly different from zero, the two variables must also be normally distributed. If this is not given, the calculated test statistic t or the p-value cannot be interpreted reliably. Thanks for watching and see you next time.